Hello, good evening and welcome back to the channel. You're going to see me on screen there adjusting my HP Reverb G2 uh, VR headset because this is a set at Corsa Competitia's own version 1.9 in VR. And we're about to fly off on the track at Donington Circuit in the West Midlands in the UK. Actually, it's, I suppose it's more East Midlands than West Midlands. Now, this is a track I know very, very well. I'm really experienced at it. I've visited it in real life. I've even been round it a couple of times in real life. But never in a racing car, GT3 car, nothing like that. So, I can only speak as a bit of a layman, as when it comes to racing GT3 cars. My only experience is all the simulators that I like to play. Now, it's got to be, I'm going to put my hands up, I'm a bit of a sim racing tourist at times, about a year since I have played a set of Corsa Competition Zone. And why is that? Well, I absolutely love the sim, I love the racing, but I got frustrated with the physics. Now, patch 1.9 has altered the physics, it's altered the tyre model, and it's also altered the suspension uh, physics um, geometry slightly, um, bump stops and different things. I'm not going to go in depth or in detail, because I can't give you that detail, because I've not watched the developer's YouTube channel where he went in depth and explained everything. But from watching some other sim racing YouTubers, reading some things online, it's pretty much the consensus that version 1.9 has fixed the issue with the curbs. Um, this was a big issue in a set of course of competitions own that when cars rode over curbs quite violently, it would throw them off track, it would spit you off and spin you off. That has been resolved. Now, I, that was never ever my issue with ACC. My issue was with um, dropping the car at low speeds dropping the car, losing the car in a understeer slash oversteer situation for just no apparent reason. And I think one of the issues I've always had with ACC early on is that the feeling I got from the force feedback, um, the inputs that, that I could feel through the wheel, didn't properly communicate to me what the car was doing. Now, maybe I was over-driving, maybe I was under-driving, maybe it's because I didn't understand the tyre temperatures, but it just, to me, it felt quirky. For example, if I jump into Automobilista 2 at Dunnington in the McLaren 720, pretty quickly I can start knocking out some fairly decent laps. If I jumped into ACC back before patch 1.9, I'd struggle. I'd enjoy racing, but I got frustrated when a silly mistake had put you out the race, basically. As soon as you've lost the car, you, you've lost your place in the race. But, behold, because patch 1.9, I think, actually, I have tweeted and even sent a message out on the community post, I think it's really gone a long way to resolving that issue. It's not completely gone, but we further uh, fettling and trying things tonight, which this video is recorded from, I think I've made massive improvements. Now, part of that is in force. I want to thank uh, Boosted Media for his video because, and I did read this online, about the tyres working in a certain tyre uh, temperature range. And that uh, temperature range or pressure range, whatever it is, is between 26 and 27. Now, how we achieve that uh, figure is when we're in the pits you need to alter the tyre pressures. Now I think lowering the tyre pressures creates more heat 
and pushes you above the working window. If you higher the tyre pressures, um, I don't know if it brings that down. You'll have to work it out. Anyway, what I did, I done a few sighting laps out on track. If the tyre pressures were going above the window, I brought the tyre pressures down and that seemed to lower the figure of 26 or 27. And if the figure was low, by increasing the pressure, it brought that number up. Now, I must admit, I had sort of read online about this between 26 and 27 window, but I hadn't taken it in. And it's watching Boosted Media's uh, video where he was mentioning about the aggressive setup and the default setup and saying even the aggressive setup didn't seem to get the tyres in the right window and it might need further fettling. And so taking that aboard, I've jumped into ACC again tonight and I've been playing around till I've got the tyres in that window. And in this McLaren, what a difference it has made. I find in ACC, the certain cars suit my driving style. And the McLaren 720S, the GT3 uh, version, I, I absolutely jam with it. Uh, I love the brakes. The ABS doesn't really kick in in it. It's a progressive pedal which I like, you can hear the brakes squealing away there. The brakes don't lock up, they're sharp, That they're how I like them, I like to jump and get on the brakes. Not only that, it's the tyre feel, the chassis feel, I can really sort of feel what this car's doing and gel with it. And personally speaking, I think the McLaren is one of the easiest cars in ACC to drive, it is for me anyway, and I really get to, to gel with it. Now, an advantage of VR is that it gives you the most realistic experience in sim racing, in my personal opinion. If I tried to race ACC on a flat screen, I would be rubbish, I would be worse than a new, I just, I, I've got I've got a disconnect with the flat screen racing. I don't like it. In VR, I actually feel like I'm driving the car, and I honestly think that brings you back as close to near world, real near world experience as possible. So, if you've got a decent sim, I think in VR you should be able to get up to speed very quickly and the fact in the past that I used to struggle with ACC sort of gives me the indicator it didn't feel right. In VR a simulator's got nowhere to hide because the field of view is big it's like, like I say it's like in because it feels like you're in the car it amplifies the suspension movement everything I think you can really tell a sim's core physics from VR. Now the fact that version 1.9 seems to have sorted a lot out has brought this a long way. Uh, not tonight, but yesterday I drove ACC back to back with a set of Corsa. And I can honestly say a set of Corsa has got more feeling coming through the wheel. And that's on my Logitech G27, a very entry uh, low level entry wheel. If I had a DD, I'd be getting even more information. And in my opinion, over time, going even faster. A DD gives you so much more. Um, I don't know what the word is. So much more input through the wheel. So much more feeling of what the car's doing on the track, what the tyres are doing, the bump stops than you get on a standard entry level wheel but even comparing a set of course that with ACC, ACC in my opinion is the better sim, it's got more fidelity, it's giving you more information through the wheel so if ACC keeps moving forward in this positive direction it, it bears a good, a good footing for a set of course or two and even ACC in the future. Now, just because I've gelled with the easiest car, I think, to drive in the game, that didn't really 
answer the question, has it made it better for all cars? And I uh, just want to say there, I've got a lap of 134.5. I think that says before it just went off. I don't know whether that's a decent lap. I've been out of the ACC game for a while, so. But you can see there, we'll take that as a benchmark, 134.14 with the McLaren 720. So what I want to do now, we're going to jump into the Audi R8. Now the Audi R8 used to be my go-to car in ACC, but since the 1.9 update, I was struggling. Running out in the Audi with the 1.9 update, I felt that the rear on the Audi was really loose far more far looser than it had been previously on previous patched versions uh, I also felt that it moved around a lot more now obviously the new tire uh, simulation is it's doing its job and that's not a bad thing but the R8 is predominantly more rear drive happy than the McLaren. The McLaren seems a more balanced car to drive, in my opinion. So, again, I am uh, taking aboard the tyre window between 26 and 27. Um, I went out, done a few sighting laps, got an idea of the temperature. Now, it, to be fair, Ever since this patch update, I've been paying more attention to the temperature. Well, temp and where is it temperature or is it pressure of the tyres? I don't know. Whatever that figure relates to, the t between 26 and 27. I'd never even looked at that before previously. But it makes such a big difference now because when you go out, the Audi doesn't give you an indication that the tyres are cold. Uh, there's no colour coding, we just get that readout there, that uh, square block there with the black numbers. That's where our uh, figures for the tyres are. So I kept a good eye on that and after fettling the pressures uh, two or three times, I went back out and I gave it another go because with the tyres coming in the window after about a lap and a half, it gives the car far more grip and far more confidence. Um, something else that I uh, started fettling with in the Audi was the ABS. I can't remember what setting it, it's on by default, but I've dropped that down to setting one. And I've also turned the traction control down to setting two. Now, with this and keeping... <laughs> oh. Right, there is an example of having a little wobble, losing control, steering into it, and I'm off the track. It's not something... It, it, it was fairly low speed. I mean, I, did, I wasn't properly watching up to that then, because I'm doing this voiceover for the video, but that's an example of what happens in ACC. So, it's still there. Now... It's only in ACC that I'm getting these little offs and quirks. I mean, that's that's a bit of a lie because I do get in a set of Corsa. But that's normally with like high downforce cars and when you're coming into a corner that's got, you basically the downforce is too low and you haven't got the grip on the tyres. But a GT3 car, it's not a high downforce car. Yeah, I appreciate it's got slick tyres and slick tyres when they're not in the window can be slippy but this is where I think ACC still needs a little bit more work because at times the car's doing something that I don't understand why it's doing it but I'm saying that getting the tyres in the window and it, it made a massive improvement it made it the R8 easier to drive. Now, I noticed the R8 is higher geared than the McLaren. Now, as we are dropping downhill here, it's easy at that point to go into there with too much speed. I'm going to throw up an example in a minute where I did that. 
and it just washed us out off the track. Now, it's my fault because I'm going in too hot, but in my opinion, in my feelings, the car could do it, but then it didn't. And so, although I'm getting more connections with the cars than I've ever done in ACC, there's still a bit missing, there's still a bit of that granularity and the connection with the car that's not quite giving me the information through VR and through my wheel. I mean, I, perhaps if I had a DD, I'd get that informa more information, I don't. I can't tell you what's missing, but what I can tell you is something's not right, because at times I'm dropping the car when I believe I shouldn't be. Um, I'm just going to pause my narration here and I'll find the bit where I go in too hot. So this is the uh, lap where I've dropped the car. So we're just going across the start finish line. Uh, we're coming up to the first right hander. Slowing down I think it's about second gear here. Just waiting to get back on the power. Going up to third, we'll be going into fourth. Do I make fifth gear? Fifth gear here. Just as a turn in, it's too much. And it's the slightest little slide steer into it, but it puts us off track. And at that point, we've dropped quite a few places. And it's, that's the, it's still the frustrating thing about ACC. So, wrapping up, just before we go, I just wanted to have a quick talk about the VR side of ACC. In my opinion, um, the mirror that we've got on screen is a fair reflection of what you can see in the headset. Even though I've got my settings at 4K, I've obviously had to dial some of the graphical settings in the headset back um, because my 3080 Ti just doesn't have the horsepower to push this as far as I want. Um, I would have liked a 4090 by now to uh, see how much more I could get out of uh, VR with the Reverb G2, but pricing for that's still more than I want to pay for a graphics card. But with a new headset maybe coming out later this year, maybe, it's a big maybe, I do want to build an improved PC for that so I'm just going to see what graphics cards are about at the time but just to report ACC in VR still a heavy toll on the system but my Ryzen 9 5900X and my 3080 Ti while playing without recording is more than sufficient to do a race I can't remember how many people in a race about 14 16 cars and it runs fine. So, having not played ACC for over a year, patch 1.9 has drew me back in and I want to start racing again. I'm going to leave you here because it's the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, do all that good stuff and I'll see you soon in the next one. Peace out.